Hey guys, welcome back to Metal Tips and Tricks. We are continuing our series on rebuilding this magnetic sign chuck. We're going to take this raw stock now and make that new part. We're going to start out with a square or rectangular piece of stock. The challenge is how do you chuck it in the lathe and get it centered? Well, that's what I'm going to show you today. It's actually a pretty simple process. To get it lined up, we're actually, we've already punched the center in here and we're going to use our tail stock. The challenge now is getting it so it's flat against the chuck. Here's a cool little trick if you guys haven't seen it yet. As you go in with a set of parallels, give you enough surface to tap your material flat. And hold it. Now, luckily this piece is not that critical. If I'm off five or ten thousandths, it's not going to be the end of the day. Now we want to bring in our tail stock. We can see that it's off. This side needs to come over. There are more accurate ways to line this up, and there are certain devices to help you line it up. But at the end of the day, we're not working with that critical a part. So I'm not going to take up the time to do that. I have to say that last cutter was pretty dull cleaning up that end, but all I need to do is clean up because we're going to actually do a different treatment towards that end. Now what we need to do is cut the slot. So we're going to mill off the top of this, find the center, and then mill that down and that slot's going to be for the handle. So I'm setting up an edge finder here, 
And I'm going to do something I don't do very often on my uh, YouTube channel, and that is I'm going to use the DRO. Now, it's funny how many times I do a project and don't use the DRO and how many people kind of, well, they send me little notes and tell me I should have used my DRO. And Well, remember, the purpose of this channel, Metal Tips and Tricks, is to do things in its simplest fashion. In other words, not everybody has a DRO, so I'm not going to use my DRO every time for videos because it doesn't serve a lot of a lot of you viewers. So now to find the center of our target, we just have to divide that number in half and move it over and we'll be able to make our milk cut. There are two ways to actually make this slide, well, there's several different ways. But with an end mill, I can cut through like I did there, or I can do plunge cuts. And plunge cuts are faster, I think. I think I want to plunge down further. The trick to plunge cuts is not taking a plunge cut the full diameter of your cutter. You only want to use about a third of it, because that's where the end of it is moving the most. If you're at the very center of it, well, it's hardly rotating, so it's not going to cut much, and you're going to just bat battle it. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to come down. That's a good distance. Next, we're going to widen this out to where it's a half inch wide. We're going to make the handle half inch wide. It doesn't have to be a super tight fit, but we do want to make it, you know, give it within five thousandths. Let's take a measurement of what the overall. So that's a three eighths inch cutter. We probably need to move it over about a sixteenth of an inch. Sixteenth of an inch is 0 .0625. We're going to recenter this. All right. direction. Same thing, but it'll be positive 0625. This says I can take off another 15 or 7,000 per side. Our next step is we're going to drill the pivot hole through here and get that set up. We're going to drill a 1032nd hole, or we're going to put a 1032nd tap in this. this radius here. To finish this piece off, I want to put a radius around this so it just looks better. The square bulky look just isn't working for me, so I'm going to pull out a special jig for this. And this right now is still in the prototype stage. I've done a video. I've shot the video. I just haven't edited it and put it on YouTube of this fixture and how it works. And it's a little dangerous. It's a little crazy. Um, but it does work if you're careful. And basically what we need to do is we got to set this up with a collar, tighten that down, and we're basically going to bring in the cutter and we're going to manually rotate this and cut it. Now the reason of the collar is, see this spiral is helical flutes on this? It actually wants to take your piece and pull it up. So you have to put a collar on here to tighten it down to keep it stable. Let me show you how this works.
Now, is that slick or what? Fast, easy, it's got a good radius on it. Now, I know there's gonna be some troll out, trolls out there saying, well, that's not an accurate way of doing it. Guys, it's not about accuracy, it's about quickness and efficiency. And actually, it probably is pretty accurate the way I've done it. You know, your inaccuracy comes with how uh, this fits on the pin, and you also have different size pins for the different size holes that you have. But that's it. Now, I've got, of course, a little shoulder on here, and I plan to actually take this to the surface grinder and clean that up by hand. The handle's pretty much set up. Next, we need to drill a hole through here so we can get a pin in to hold onto the shaft. I gotta say, I was pretty lucky that when I drilled through, that it went all the way through and didn't bind up and so didn't break the drill bit. So there we are, those parts. Pretty much finished. Gonna have to do some just you know detail work, clean them up a little bit, and cut this arm off. That's not a big deal. And assemble it. I hope you guys have enjoyed this last video. There's still a lot more to come. We've got some very cool milling work to do on this, some unique lathe techniques, measuring techniques. As you can see in that first video, there's a lot of stuff that has to be done to this magnetic sign chuck to get it back into shape. So I want you guys to stay tuned. If you like this video, please give me some thumbs up. Also leave some of your comments. And until next time, go out in your shop and build something cool. Thanks.